Hello everyone once again, we're watching this video, because why not? And I do hope the people outside my door will stop screaming so that I can record something, but thank you all so much the for stopping by. A bad guy. That much we can take for granted. Yes, yes there are anti-heroes and anti-villains and non-villainous antagonist characters who okay. just get in the way, but a villain is a villain. These are the characters bound to do something bad. The characters who are heroes mm -hmm. are duty bound to stand against. Because otherwise, they might get away with some truly evil behavior. Like, for instance, melting okay. all the world's chocolate. What? Or, say, stealing Mount Rushmore. Yes, uh. indeed. Villains sure are evil 100% of the time. Especially the ones who gleefully describe themselves that way. Oh, this is that. this is supposed to be villains like Doofenshmirtz. Where they just want to take over the tri-state area. But they really aren't that bad, considering the things they do. I, the ones with no real motive except to be the villain. Those mustache twirlers and lab coat wearers who just really love to use the word evil, even though they very clearly have no idea what it means. Yep. No greater evil in this world than this, our beloved, but barely mm. qualified, ne'er-do-well. I do like villains like that and wanted to write such a villain where it's mostly a kid trying to be the best villain he can ever do, but going after clearly childish stuff, you know, like stealing candy bars from a candy shop and such things. The villain in name only. Oh, the villain in name only is what it's called. I didn't actually know there was a term for it, I will be honest. But I probably should have guessed. Hmm. One of the best things in life is learning, which is probably True. why you're here to begin with. Unfortunately, not everyone learns the same. We must all Public learn. Forced to learn, I shove a book in your option. face. And I don't really think it ever can be. Hmm. As a result, a lot of us creative types end up missing out on a lot of precious education. Fortunately, there is a shockingly easy, fun, and highly personalized way to get an education Calgary. right from home. Learn all of your fundamentals, maths, sciences, computer uh. programming, and more with our sponsor, Brilliant. Visit brilliant.org slash tailfoundry to get 30 hmm. days for free and 20% nice. off a year subscription. Seriously, this is the most fun you'll probably ever have learning this stuff. Try it out for free and be as brilliant as I know that you can be. I'm not nearly brilliant as I wish I could the be. The first thing that comes to mind when you think of villains that are not actually very villainous might just be the really pathetic ones. The kind you find a lot in cartoons and sitcoms who have big, evil dreams but just don't really have what it takes to realize them. Often okay. because they're too tiny and cute for fear and worship. I think... I do like those villains a lot. I don't know if I would be able to effectively make a story like that, but I do want to give it a try where I just have a villain like that. Plankton from SpongeBob SquarePants is kind of the quintessential example of this. Yeah. He's literally a single-celled organism and still nevertheless trying to achieve world domination <laughs> one stolen burger recipe at a time. Yeah, and that's always been goofy. And he's painfully aware of this fact too. But it's becoming oh, increasingly obvious. obvious. I, I can, can deny it no longer! I am small. <laughs> I love that. Doesn't... <laughs> I just love that. I can deny it no longer. I am small. I remember that episode. Really changed the fact that he really is evil. Just being unable to fulfill his evil dreams doesn't change their true nature. True. In the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, he's actually able to get his hands on something which makes that key weakness irrelevant. The magical crown of Neptune. And well, it's not really magical. Out of the way, we but, yeah. see what the world would be like if he could fulfill his wishes. Yeah. A dystopian hellscape where everyone has been brainwashed and enslaved, and they spend their mm. lives building monuments to their single-celled overlord. Characters like Plankton are goofy and fun to watch because they're farcical. If they could win, it would be terrifying. Yeah. But they can't, and because of their bad intentions. It's funny to watch them try and fail, but make no mistake, they are still bad guys. They are so, evil, 
even if they can't act on it successfully. So does that make him not enter the trope of villain in only name? Because villain in only name usually aren't that bad. Uh, this gives me some thoughts to think about because the one I wanted to create isn't truly bad. He just, well, thinks being bad is cool. What I'm really talking about in this video are the villains who self-identify as evil, but just aren't. Ah, yeah. The trick to making good villains, I have often been told, so, yeah, is to it make wouldn't them three-dimensional characters with their own complex backstory and rational motives. Don't just make them evil for no reason. After all, we're each the yeah. hero of our own story, aren't we? Nobody thinks they're the bad guy. Of course right? not. Well, not quite. It's a bit less common, but even in real life, there are those who revel in the idea of evil for its own sake. Criminals yeah, and deviants who just like this kind of thing. In fiction, it gets taken to a ridiculous extreme. There are some people that just like being evil, and you can tell that they're reveling in just being evil. Every second of it. I'm not sure if there's people in real life like that, but... Well, actually, Billions there are, are people in real life like that, but we're not talking about them, are we? Out of their dastardly deeds, who join organizations with evil in the evil name... Evil Club. ...who print it on their business cards. <laughs> but evil, as I understand it, is supposed to refer to... Thank you for the link, you know, links. ...immoral stuff? Things we find reprehensible? Yes. For someone to call themselves evil in this way implies that they see themselves as those things... Yeah. But the villains I'm talking Hello, about Paige. don't really seem to. Welcome back. We got raided by Palm and Minx. A rare two Yay. And I was very thankful for them. They're very good friends. Very neat. Very nice. Yes, I just yeah. recorded a quick thing. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. We're watching things about e villains in, o in name only. Basically, uh, basically, like the doof and schmutz. The villain with noble yeah. Goal. yeah. Like, they say that they're evil, but their actions don't really, you know. To these characters, it's almost like evil means something completely different. Yeah. I don't watch a lot of Saturday Night Live, as you can probably imagine, but there is one skit I've seen that sort of captures Most this. Most scientists are actually mad engineers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more or less. They're just people who feel like they have a right reason to be pissed at someone or the world. That's why it's always engineers. True. That's how the supervillain Shriek in Batman Beyond was made. Because he couldn't find any work and the only guy willing to pay him was like, yeah, go kill Bruce Wayne with your supersonic tech that can do a lot of cool stuff. It's a little dark. So buckle yeah. up. It's about a group of supervillains competing in a world's most evil invention contest. Okay. One villain predictably shows up with a shrink ray to shrink all the world's monuments. Another, okay. of course, shows up with a freeze ray to encase them all in ice. Okay. And then, Dwayne the Rock Johnson shows up with his evil invention, a robotic sex predator. What? <laughs> the crowd of villains is instantly appalled. Confused, what? he reminds them that this is a most evil invention competition. Benito Mussolini used to force feed people castor oil until they literally died of diarrhea. He that I did not know. What the hell? He says, baffled. I mean, that's gotta be where the main hosts are. Have right? ever heard by death by milk of hunt milk and honey? Oh yeah, I heard about that one. Uh, just being force fed milk and honey while being strapped to two boats. It's uh. Yeah, let me put it this way, people. You don't want to just eat and drink fluids. You need solid foods. And he's not wrong. You would think so, right? Mm -hmm. But this is not a room full of true villains he's talking to. This is a room full of the G-rated Saturday morning cartoon brand of villains. But the like I said before, I want to make a kid supervillain like this that just does goofy things. Like, he considers himself the most evil villain created possible, but he just, like, steals candy bar a bunch of candy bars from the candy store. You know what would be extra funny? What? 
a villain who makes toxic chemicals all the time, but it's really just really sour candy. <laughs> it's like just licking the floor. They just like put their finger down. Like we're like, no, don't do that. That's toxic. Like, no, it just tastes like a lemon. Evil they get up to tends to be more unpleasant, irritating but yeah. rarely ever morally reprehensible, which explains their shock when this guy walks in with an actual evil plan. The movie Despicable Me gives us a really good profile for this kind of villain. Gru, the True. super villain mastermind, decides that he wants to steal the moon. Now, if you were actually to do that in real life, you would cause an apocalyptic surge of natural disasters as the Earth's orbit destabilizes and begins to wobble on its axis. Pretty much. But the movie... Doesn't I love the at all. I love the confirmation that werewolves do actually exist. <laughs> yeah, that was goofy. It, it's it's something that's never brought up again in the Despicable Me universe. Yeah, he just steals the moon and then whoop, the werewolf turns back into a man. A naked man. <laughs> yeah. Gru has no interest in causing floods, storms, and mass extinctions. He just wants to steal the moon to prove how quote-unquote evil he is, especially to the new villain who just stole the Pyramids of Giza for sense. equally goofy there reasons. There's Dracula in the Minions fact, movie, I saw that bit. These two are literally competing to prove their evilness. The way mm -hmm. they carry themselves, you might as well replace the word evil with cool here. Pretty much. Who isn't exactly a nice guy, at least not at first. Early in the movie, he's shown doing things like popping a child's balloon just to upset them. Mm. But that doesn't really make him evil, does it? It yeah. just makes him kind of a jerk. And yeah. it seems that... There is a like big difference between moon. undastardly evil and just being kind of a jerk. E. You, you don't want to be either as a good guy, but... Yeah, there's a clear difference between causing a giant flood that would murder hundreds of people and... Uh, stealing some ice cream. E. His main motivation for doing it is simply to build his villain cred. Look, Gru is mean to children. <laughs> How can you possibly say that he's anything but evil? In this sense, yeah, like stealing candy from a baby. It's a terrible thing to do. Yes, to him, but to, or who gave the, the baby candy in the beginning? Menaced. That is also true. You should never give a baby candy. Pathetic. Which brings me to something that might seem a little detached. An example you probably weren't anticipating. Okay, what is Pirates. it? Pirates. What? I know, I know. Kind of a weird pull. But think about <laughs> it. Pirates were literal criminals of the sea. They yeah. didn't just pillage and plunder and rifle and loot like in the song. They also killed, raped, and burned towns. That they were true. not good guys by any means. They were scary. Evil is a very applicable term here. True. But now, look at their legacy. Somehow, over the course of generations, you can think parts, parts of the Caribbean. The sort of fun costume that characters wear. Yeah. The fantastical ships, the hook hands, yeah. the peg legs, the made up <laughs> accent, the comedic birds. The if pirates. anything, pirates are kind of difficult not to love these days. In fact, this character has so eclipsed the historical reality of pirates as thieves. And now you get truly bizarre depictions like this. What the hell? <laughs> uh, are you looking at the screen? Yeah, I'm. I'm well aware of Disney's pirates. Yeah, but I it just almost seems like people naturally latch on to this idea that being quote unquote evil, Do it that is a little naughty, me. a little devious, a little unrepentant, yeah, is pretty fun. So I guess it's no surprise to see pirates and supervillains sort of subverted in this way and made relatively harmless, even yeah, though can see you know, they still call themselves villains. In a way, you could say it's almost a performance. Actually, there are yeah. honestly a lot of villains who literally just aren't villainous at all. They just have that title. Some of them were forced into it, like Wreck-It Ralph, who was basically cast as a villain against his will, and in fact finds it so unpleasant that he goes to group therapy with a bunch of other villains specifically to help him deal with it. That is kind of interesting, going to literally bad guy therapy and be like, you know, I really don't like, you know, being the villain or all this. Just because you're a bad guy doesn't mean you're a bad guy. 
Though I heard people that usually play villains are some of the nicest people and just love, like, the thing of pretending to be the bad guy. I love being the bad guy. I know you do, Gage. You've made it clear with your evil laugh. Do you want to commission me to be your villain? Maybe at some point, but I first need to think of a villain. <laughs> I'll wait. But I think... Oh, dear. I think the truest interpretation of this villain in name only thing is the kind who isn't really a villain at all okay. and still chooses to be, like, as a career path. <laughs> career path Think about villain. how many villains want to take over the world, for instance. I'm thinking of think Megamind. Think about how vague... Mm -hmm. Yeah, Megamind is my mostly thought where this goes to. Make a mind's interesting because it's quite literally has a similar mindset to me where he goes, wait, is this my fate? Is this what I meant to do? He's like, okay, if that's the truth, then I will do my very best to play my part that the universe has set out for me. Which, uh, I can kind of understand. When you're good at something, you feel like you're filling a role that you're supposed to. And when mm -hmm. that whole equilibrium is messed up, he doesn't know what to do because he's played his part. But oh, crap. I won. I did the biggest part. What I, do I do now? Exactly. I played my part. Now it's... Is, is it over? It, it. Can I no longer play my part? What's my purpose now that I no longer have a foil? that is it could be evil like establishing a global authoritarian regime but like Gru and his plan to take the moon most of these characters aren't really thinking about anything like that just Please. imagine I will make a little boy villain where his whole thing is I will take over the world that way I can eat ice cream every single day from now on specify these vague impossibly oh, yeah. grand ambitions yeah. but give precious little detail about how or why they're going to fulfill them <laughs> almost as if they don't truly believe they can it's yeah, I think he's gonna go into in Mega Mind. Yeah, the we go. Character yeah. was basically <laughs> assigned the role of villain at birth. Yeah, we, honestly, he he's of the same mind that we are right now when the two people that come to mind when I think worst villain that are just doing it performably are Doofenshmirtz and Megamind. Because I believe... He, uh, Doofenshmirtz literally just does it because he's sick and tired of being annoyed by things that just annoy him. Yeah. And in turn becomes somewhat of a jerk to stop these annoyances. But apparently he's a pretty good dad, so he's winning that round he's a great dad his inventions are actually helpful on the grander scheme of things yes but he just never thinks of the grander scheme of things fable has appeared and he's making static he's a robot quickly we must destroy fable terminator anyway but unlike ralph he um, embraces it it's me mushroom man oh no mushroom man Anyway, we were looking at a video called The Worst Villains Ever. It's basically performative villains like Megamind and Doofenshmirtz who are just like, I will take over the world. They're like, how are you going to do that? I don't know. I have just mostly create silly inventions that like shrink you. Yeah. When he eventually manages to defeat his when arch nemesis Metro it, Man, Megamind yes. is shot. I feel a sneeze coming on. Give me one second. He and his sidekick Marshall go on a short man. celebratory crime spree, reveling in their sudden access to Yeah, they to enjoy every little bit of that. But, as it turns out... <laughs> I just like the the image of No You Can't right there with the poster. Without a hero to thwart yeah. them, they quickly grow bored and depressed. See, Megamind never really wanted to kill Metro Man and take over the city. He just liked coming up with evil inventions and schemes and testing them against the hero. Like a years long sparring match. Pretty much. But as soon as that dynamic is over, he loses interest in evil very quickly. He even tries to make his own superhero replacement for Metro Man. Very of much. course, that goes terribly wrong, and he actually ends up creating a true villain with actual evil intentions. 
pretty much. It's uh, the difference between giving the powers of a hero and being a and hero. And when the script flips and Megamind assumes the role of a hero, we realize the truth. He was never really evil. He just liked the sound of it. It doesn't yeah. really have to be a story arc like that, though. Not all of these performative villains are secretly heroes beneath it all. Some really, really just love the idea of being a villain. Which, yeah. And I can think of no better example of a fully committed, okay. passionate, there for his own special brand of evil, villain in name only, okay. than Dr. Hank. Oh Stevens my god! In the show. Oh my god, we just... <laughs> <laughs> Is, is this... Uh, I don't know if this great. robot is secretly a clone of my mind or something, but it's immediately where my mind went. <laughs> Maybe it's just writers and we think alike. Oh, Phineas and Ferb. Yeah. <laughs> this is a man who owns his own corporation called Doofenshmirtz Evil Incorporated with a catchy commercial <laughs> jingle and everything. Yeah. He owns a building with the word evil written on it in Quite giant literally. letters. He is the quintessential proud supervillain and his plans are usually no more objectionable than deflating the city's bouncy houses. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't even want to take over the world, just the tri-state area. Remember earlier when I said that a mm -hmm. good villain has a complex backstory? Doofenshmirtz is basically a parody of that entire trope. He does have a lot of complex backstory, which is, I remember one being, During my birth, neither of my parents How came. What backstories can one clown have? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He, he just had a terrible childhood, and when he meets the actual evil version of himself, he's like, Dude, this is so unfair. I was literally raised by ocelots. And all you did was lose your train. Also, I found a piece of art that I'm going to send to Fable later. Each of his evil devices <laughs> is inspired by some bizarre, implausible anecdote from his yeah. hilariously tragic backstory. <laughs> his father used him as a lawn gnome, yeah. so he builds his Destructinator to destroy all lawn gnomes in the tri-state area. <laughs> his mother's love was inexplicably linked to kickball, so he creates the Kickinator 5000 <laughs> to win the kickball game at his family reunion. Neither of his parents showed up for his birth, <laughs> so he invents the nefariously named Slavenator, which of course he uses to force people to attend his birthday party. Yeah. On top of everything, Doofenshmirtz Dear models God. this archetype beautifully through his attachment to his heroic nemesis, Perry the Platypus. A platypus? He basically lives to show off his schemes to Perry. Funny thing is, uh, we actually know a platypus VTuber, and you've probably seen them on some of these videos. He gets upset when Perry <laughs> doesn't show up to thwart him. Oh. <laughs> like Megamind, a suspiciously large portion of his planning seems to be aimed at just... Catching the hero's also... attention. <laughs> Wait, what? But for Perry and Doof, the bond goes deeper. The show paints their nemesis relationship as almost romantic, <laughs> complete with cheating, yeah. jealousy, and a whole love song. When Doof's Kickinator backfires on him, causing his mother to lavish attention on his brother Roger instead, Aww. Perry is the one who comforts him. Needless to say, pretty much yeah. none of his schemes are successful. But that's okay. Yeah, pretty because much. Because for him, success isn't the point. For Doofenshmirtz, evil is more about the journey than oh, the yeah, destination. Oh yeah, quite literally his organization is called Love Muffin. It doesn't matter whether you win in the end, <laughs> as long oh, as... Oh yeah, everyone... the whole time he has Perry the Platypus help set up his daughter's sweet 16. And had fun. I do think pretty fun great. is at the heart of yeah, this whole Yeah, it was pretty great. Which is probably why it mainly shows up in comedy. But... What about when the fun runs out? Where does playing villain cease to be play? Hmm. There's a miniseries that came out back in 2008 uniquely suited to answer this question. I've never heard you of this. You might even remember it. It's called Dr. Horrible's oh, Sing Along Blog. This. It's about You know this? I know these songs. They're great. Oh, Fable's going no in the chat. <laughs> His mic is unmuted, so I don't know what's Some happening. Up and coming supervillain desperately trying to secure membership in the premier villain organization, the Evil League of Evil. No oh, god. After he messes up one too many times, he's told that his only chance to get in is to commit a murder. 
What? Something Dr. Horrible, who up until now has only used a freeze ray, stun gun, and remote control van, finds distasteful. Ah. Nevertheless, under the pressure to prove himself as a villain, he makes plans to convert his stun ray into a death ray and take out his superhero nemesis, who's honestly a huge jerk and really hard to feel bad for anyway. Ah. But then, during the fateful moment, things go awry and the device ends up killing someone else instead. Someone he cares about deeply. Oh no. It technically counts as a murder, and in the scuffle, he does technically defeat his nemesis. So, technically, his dreams are coming true. The last Not we the way see he of won. Dr. Horrible, he's a shell of his former self. Empty, numb, and a certified member of the Evil League of Evil. He has everything he ever wanted, the world at his feet. But he's miserable. He has oh. become the other kind of worst villain ever. The kind who is good at being evil. Ah. Don't get me wrong, I love a well written serious villain as much it as It hurts, says Fable in the chat. So he actually does know about this too. Yeah. Like yeah, it's a it's a really crazy series and I suggest you give it a listen at some point. Yeah, I can understand it hurts, that. It makes me it hurts. It makes me think of things like where stories go awry for the hero and you can only watch them basically kind of not really backslide, but just go further down into the privacy, like I did with uh, Code Geass, and just watch Lulu slowly go closer and closer to madness. Yeah, but the whole thing about Code Geass was Lulu was already a villain. He was just pretending to be the hero. No, but he wasn't willing to go the far of how far he did. He was actually thinking of giving up his long plans until one accident led to so many dead that he couldn't go back. It just became a landslide at that point. And honestly, it's kind of sad to see. It's one of those things where you kind of want to see where it's going to hope something better will happen, but you know it's not going to. Anybody else, but I think there's something really interesting in this archetype. I think villains are especially prone to tumbling into melodramatics, getting so mm -hmm. caught up in their tragic backstory and their circuitous motivations that they kind of stop being fun. In the effort to be taken seriously, it seems like so many villains end up bogged down by rules and expectations for what it means to be a villain. A villain. But not these ones. Remember, these are villains in name only. They're pretty much categorically opposed to seriousness. Yeah. It's okay if they break the rules and do their own thing. They, they don't choose want it. to accomplish anything meaningful or... Mo I would actually like to create Fable if you want to create a miniseries about a little guy who just wants to be a villain, but slowly starts to think about what it means to be a villain to him. Sure, I can probably make a tragic villain if you want. Not really it's tragic, we're not going for that. But yeah. Lemons. Evil is lemons. A, Funny enough, at the start, he has talk the ability to summon citrus at people. Oh it's my beautiful. god. Morally repulsive. They just want to make a statement. Yeah. And that statement is wow. Look check at me. Out how evil I am. Pretty much. They just yes, want to be. Technically, it makes them some of the worst villains ever. But it also makes them some of the funnest. Oh, you're a villain. Presentation. Unlike them, however, you probably do want to accomplish something meaningful with your life, right? Maybe. As fun as these characters are in fiction, we all want to be competent, at least. Unfortunately, are you me the Doctor Horrible oh, left behind Gage, where education. For those who don't know, Gage just sent me the Doctor Horrible songs. Sorry. I'll look at those Public later. Public school isn't really a one-size-fits-all solution, and seeking your own education is increasingly reserved for people with enough money to pay for it. But it doesn't have to be that way. Our sponsor, Brilliant.org, can make all of that far more affordable and far more fun than it's ever been before. Brilliant really has been helping me broaden my horizons. I can always go to the site, click into a class, pick up where I left off, and take in a bite-sized piece of the fundamentals I've been missing. Whether it's maths, science, physics, anything and everything STEM, 
Brilliant has something for you. Okay. Lately, for me, it was Brilliant's thinking in code Ooh. class, which I feel. I is do hope you guys like these videos because me. us talking really about these actually ideas is something I do like because we all want to write our stories. No I want to create comics. Before. Slowly but surely, as of I educate kinds. myself in this way, the AI revolution isn't looking quite. I just want to have anymore. bad cartoon and villains, but everyone. Honest, Everyone beats me really up and wants like actual studying. bad villains. A lot like, of what all right, but listen, if they get too far out of hand, it's their fault. Mm. Look yeah, how that's interactive and fun for these are. This one even has it's robots. It's true. Mm -hmm. Because Brilliant is so simple, moves at your all pace, I want to do is make simple fundamentals. This is actually mm -hmm. something that's no, everyone really Everyone wants me to go into the deepest parts of my soul and get the darkest of village. I'm like, alright. Just don't ask if I'm okay or not, because you're opening Pandora's box, not me. You're the one that opened Pandora's box. I just presented you the gift. You can start. Yeah, pretty much. Visit brilliant.org slash tailfoundry or click the link in the description to get your first 30 days for free. I have an evil bandito bandit that wants to steal stuff. The first 200 tailfoundry fans to sign up for a yearly subscription to Brilliant will get 20% off. No bandito, not me. Yes, I know bandito. I was making a joke. Again, visit brilliant.org slash tailfoundry to get your first 30 days for free. No, I'm taking your idea back. He is a burrito bandito. Oh my god. His whole deal is he steals everyone's uh, burritos. Try this out for free. Oh, okay. Especially the breakfast burritos. Oh no, not the breakfast burritos. That's, that's how you know he's super evil. Anyway, that's all for this one. That's how you know he's Thanks super for watching, evil. And keep... Okay, then he's gonna die, says Common. Making stuff up. I'll see you. <sighs> Listen, Tom, and if you want me to reach into the deepest recesses of my mind and give you an Elder God that will literally destroy your soul, I will no do touch it. My no one I touches will. my breakfast burritos and lives to tell the tale, apparently says Common. But yes, thank you all for watching this with us. If you like what I'm doing here, please do consider following, subscribing, all that stuff you do for streamers, because this shows us that you want us to react to this stuff, and I like Tales of Foundry's videos. Of course, we're not going to just suddenly stop reacting to the other stuff, but it's still nice to know what you guys would have us react to. So, yeah. Also, 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 please make sure to check out my stuff. I need the support. I'm, I'm literally living in a box without with rainwater and cat food, and I'm running out of rainwater. It's horrible. It's horrible, guys. Save me. The fable is in the sure as hell won't. Oh, my God. Fable's link is in the description. You can watch him try and get through Dark Souls. Or just watch me being really dumb and dying a lot because I enjoy I enjoy the fact that I'm not taking it at all seriously. Yes, that's a very good thing, Fable. Anyway, we're going to raid Mori now. I have like oh, sorry, I forgot to came to the end of the video. Thank you all so much and I've already said the things.